Mark my words, Ghost of Tabor is going to revolutionize virtual reality games because of two specific gameplay elements, scarcity and persistence. But what exactly does that mean, and why does it make this VR game feel so much more real? Hi, I'm Virtual Bro, and I'm always looking for the best VR games that are actually worth your time. In this video, I'm going to highlight the specific features of Ghost of Tabor that make it so amazing. He's shooting at me! Wait. He's shooting at me! Ah. I'm gonna book it to that next building, ready? First the tree, then the building. Ah! Alright, move up, move up. Just wanna survive, man. Just like you. All this footage is captured on Quest 2, so I apologize for not showing off the best looking version of this game, as I'm sure the graphics are way better on PC VR. But anyways. Where'd, where did he go? What the? Oh, jeez. Ghost of Tabor is almost like a battle royale game, but without all of the immersion-breaking game mechanics found in something like Fortnite or the VR equivalent, Population 1. What's different about Ghost of Tabor is that there are no rounds, no respawns, no loadouts, no storm, and more importantly, no winner. This isn't a trivial competition or a virtual sport. It's a fight for your survival. Where's that airdrop? Oh, crap. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because at its core, this is a PvP survival game, complete with a thirst meter, hunger meter, stamina meter, and health meter. And despite those obvious video game mechanics, what I love about this game is that you are incentivized to play realistically. From simple things like remembering to pack food and water before you head out on a raid, or checking how many bullets are left in a magazine before reloading, to much more intense scenarios like pegging for your life when threatened by a hostile player. Player, player. Where? Oh dang. I surrender! I surrender. I'm out of ammo. This is by far the most immersive game I have ever played. To the point where I genuinely questioned the morality of some of my actions. I'm still mean to you. I felt like cold blooded, bro. And this realism applies to the weapons and items as well. You may get lucky and find a really good gum while out looting, but that won't do you much good if you don't find the proper ammo for it or extra magazines to reload. You see, the guns in this game aren't part of some loadout system that spawns with me every time I join a game. Instead, before every raid, I make the conscious decision to bring whatever limited equipment that I have stored in my safe house into the PvP map. And the scary thing is, I risk losing everything I brought in if I die. But if I successfully extract whatever I manage to bring back, I can keep until I decide to use it and risk losing it again. So this has me constantly on the lookout for extra magazines, attachments, even things like water bottles and cans of food because, well, they're scarce. You can easily run out of any item, which has you constantly trying to stock up whenever you can. I think there's one bullet in this. We're gonna try it. <laughs> there was my one shot. And while this system is a great basis for a solid gameplay loop similar to Into the Radius, your mere survival isn't what drives you to keep playing. That's something else entirely. In my last video, I briefly covered Into the Radius, where I made a very important point that it's hard to explain, but during my playthrough, I felt like this was actually my stuff. I have memories with this specific item. I went out into the radius, looted it from a house, and it's been right here ever since. This particular gun has gone with me on countless missions. No other game makes me feel this possessive over my virtual items. And, and this is noteworthy because the VR market is dominated by these sandbox style games where obtaining items is often as trivial as clicking the spawn button. And because of that, these items are effectively worthless. They can be spawned and despawned at will, sometimes contrary to your will, and there's no sense of value or ownership with these virtual objects because because there is no scarcity or consistency. If I lost this gun, I would simply spawn in another identical one to replace it, the only cost being time and mild annoyance. But in Ghost of Tabor, to acquire a new weapon, you have to go out into the world, fight off hostiles, search through containers for loot, make sure it all fits into your backpack, and then book it all the way to an extraction zone to get home safe, where you can then unpack your loot and decide to keep or sell whatever items you want. This is what I mean by persistence. 
This is the very same gun that I found in that lighthouse on that one raid. This specific water bottle I found while looting the missile silo. This is how you make me care about a game. And I know the comparison has already been made. So yes, this is very similar in concept to Escape from Tarkov, but here's why it's so much better in VR. If you don't know what Escape from Tarkov is, or aren't familiar with what makes the extraction shooter genre so unique from other FPS games, allow me to direct you to this amazing video by Operator Drewski. His video explains way more fully what makes these types of games so much more dynamic and immersive than anything else, and VR just multiplies this feeling by 10. There's a foregrip. Holy crap. Are you okay? You see, even though it's highly praised for being immersive, in Tarkov, all of your looting and inventory management looks like this, clicking and dragging items across a menu screen. But in VR, you physically open every drawer, pick up every item, take off your backpack and fit stuff into it, then organize your loot by hand to maximize the space in your bag so that you can carry as much as possible. But not only is looting a manual effort, it often requires you to set down your weapon, meaning that you are essentially risking your life every time you decide to put something in your backpack. This same risk applies to every building you enter, every body you inspect, every crate you open, every shot you fire. My turn. Got him. Another oh! This game is full of these tiny choices that will determine whether you live or die, and it's this balance of risk, reward, and punishing difficulty that makes it one of the most addicting VR games I've ever played. Hi, hi. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Dude. I f that feels like murder. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> Second player. Stack up. <sighs> and again, in Tarkov, at the end of a long raid, no matter what loot you get, your reward is always going to appear as a flat image that you can't really do anything with. So in VR, it feels so much more rewarding to make it home safely and then physically hold, inspect, and store the items that you've painstakingly acquired. Honestly, organizing my items is half the fun in this game. I just spent half an hour organizing all of my weapons. These are my SMGs, these are my pistols, these are my rifles, these are my other rifles that are worse. These are my sights and silencers, gunpowder, ammo. These are my pouches, these are my gun attachments, my backpacks. It's actually crazy that packing your stuff matters because I can't grab the stuff that's packed at the bottom there. Like, I would have to move this out of the way to grab that. The other half of the fun is, of course, the endlessly dynamic combat encounters due to the nature of the multiplayer in this game. Yo. Uh, <laughs> this is awkward. I heard you. Oh! which I'll get to soon. But there's also such a cool variety of weapons in this game that I've still probably seen less than half of them. There's clearly been an emphasis placed on making these feel very realistic, requiring a lot more precision when reloading than most other VR games. But what makes this feel even cooler is how adjustable and modular their weapons are. Anywhere there's a rail, you can attach flashlights, lasers, sights, and there's even rail mounts for weapons that don't already have them. This customization adds to the feeling that these are your guns, which makes it all the more stressful if you risk bringing them them into a raid. <laughs> no way. Dude, all of that gear, everything I had, gone. Now, enough ranting about this game. Let me try to show you what it's actually like to play the game. Welcome to the safe house. Wait, hang on. Let me turn on the lights first. Much better. Welcome to the safe house. It's a pretty decent home base. It has an armory, a shooting range, a medical bay, a ton of storage, and even a TV. But it doesn't have everything. The kitchen is a little understocked, so unless I want to starve, I'm gonna have to go out on a raid. And that's where things get dangerous. Tabor is full of hostile NPCs and hostile players, all scavenging for the same resources you are. Hey! hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Friendly? 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 Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, 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 I dropped my gun. I dropped my gun. Okay, all okay. right, all right. Do you have any meds? Do you have any heals? I do not, but I have a sight. Uh, I should, I should make uh, up for it. Okay, I guess, but... This inevitably leads to conflict. Scarcity is a big motivator, and when the only thing standing in the way of your survival is another player, well, it's you or them. Dang. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh, my reflexes, bro. And though you might call this a PvP game, there's actually nothing stopping you from making peace on the battlefield either. Teaming up is possible, that is, if you're persuasive enough. Um, I think we should stick together. All right. Oh, crap! No! <laughs> or more importantly, if you're willing to trust enough. I don't want to get killed by you, so I'm not gonna go out there, but you have a nice day. <laughs> How can I trust you? Kill us, we don't kill you. Promise? Look, look, as a show of good as a show of good faith, ready? Look, look at there. There's my main gun. And there's my secondary gun. Gosh, dude. You could be laying down your weapons to prove that you're not a threat, and still it might not be enough to earn your survival. I've got like nothing left. I just came in. I have never experienced a better use for proximity voice chat than begging for your life at the end of another player's gun, or being on the other side and sticking up a player for their loot. Hey, put your hands in the air. Drop it. Drop it. Ooh, and I get all this loot. He had a silenced gun. He had a silenced gun. Give me that. Okay, we should get out of here. And while there is plenty of good Samaritans out there who want to cooperate with you, yeah. Yeah, here, you want this? That's uh, sure. We're trying to get to the uh, secret room from the roof. I, I gotcha. I'll, I'll be like backup if anything. There are even more who want to kill you on sight without a second thought. <laughs> oh gosh. Don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Can you hear me? Wave to me. Don't. Wave to me. Can you hear? <laughs> the number one rule of Ghosts of Tabor don't trust anyone. Finley, yo. Right here. Yeah, what's up? What's up, bro? Do you have any, do you have any guns? No. Aww. But of course, the developers knew they needed a way to encourage conflict as well, so they added in these specific trader missions. Your relationship with these traders can be improved as you gain experience with them, and eventually they will start selling you better items. But what's cool is that while you can buy food, water, and whatever weapons you need from this Tabor market, you can also ignore entirely and simply scavenge for the very same items. You can grind away at these missions to earn the ability to purchase a deagle, or you can get lucky and find one by chance. You see, the primary goal while you're in a raid is to gather everything you can and complete your trader objectives before your raid timer is up. Successfully make your way to an extraction site and exfil to get home safely, and you'll secure any loot you've obtained. This loot you can then bring into another raid, but if you die out there, of course you'll lose everything you've brought, so there's a huge risk versus reward choice you make every time you gear up to go out. Will you go in fully kitted to maximize your chances of surviving any hostile encounters, or will you go in with absolutely nothing to negate the risk of losing any of your hard-earned items? Yeah. Because believe me when I say this game is hard. Half of my raids ended up with me being sniped, and the other half of my raids end like this. Yep. Oh, I see him. Oh, oh no way. I recommend always going in with at least a backpack yeah. since you never know what you're gonna find. So there's a bunch of good loot here, but I don't have a backpack to take it. Yeah, look at all this stuff that I could take with me if I had a backpack. Because there's a huge variety of items scattered throughout the map. From weapons, magazines, canned food, armor, helmets, scopes, laser sights, flashlights, water bottles, ammo pouches, grenades, gunpowder and a large amount of random valuable items that you can sell to traders in the Tabor market. But of course, Ghost of Tabor is not without its flaws. Quick warning, this game isn't even fully out yet, it's still in beta, and sometimes that is very apparent because of the annoying glitches and collisions and lighting and all that stuff. But those become very easy to overlook when you realize how much this game gets right, and when you see the developers are constantly working to improve the game. So if you see something in this video that looks a little jank, it probably is. But since this is a work in progress, the developers are constantly changing and updating the game. So here are some areas where I'd love to see some improvements made. First, please prioritize fixing these shaders and lighting for certain objects. Sometimes my gun will just turn completely black or sometimes it's a door, but usually my backpack is the hardest thing to see into. What was in there? You missed a key card. Oh crap, dude, the backpacks are impossible to see. The second thing I think they should prioritize is the party system and voice chat. The proximity chat is one of the best features in this game. I'm friendly. Uh, I don't have anything. Please spare me. <laughs> My hands are in the air. My hands are in the air. My hands are in the air. Please. I'm gonna. I'm gonna walk away. I'm gonna walk. 
Yeah, yeah, I promise. Look, look, look. You can inspect me. No, 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 funny. <sighs> Please. Nah. Here's I'm a, like. Here's a problem. Virtual. <laughs> no I way. You. No way. Yes. <laughs> you subscribe yeah. to me on YouTube? Oh, bro, I, I'm such a big fan. That's so cool. You're the first person to, like, ever recognize me. I'm such a big fan. <sighs> okay. Okay. Do you see my name? <gasps> no! I didn't see his name. He never even got an email address. But often I and other players ignore it because we have to be in a separate call to talk with our teammates. It's really immersive having to signal your teammate to be quiet when you think there are enemies nearby, but if my teammate and I ever got separated or happen to get the glitch where we don't spawn together... Uh, oh no, we didn't spawn together? Someone's shooting at me. Someone's shooting at me. I died. <laughs> There's no way for us to communicate in-game to find each other since the max range of the proximity voice chat is pretty low. What's also surprising is that there's no way to talk to your teammates while in the safe house, so before you enter a raid you might have no idea what your teammates are bringing in. I think all they would need to fix this is to create a walkie-talkie or radio system for squadmates to talk over longer distances. I mean, this helmet already appears to have a microphone specifically for that, so maybe they do plan on adding it but haven't gotten to it yet. I would also love to see the hands and full body character overhauled to allow for going prone, leaning over objects without getting physically pushed back, and more expressive hands. Can you see where they're coming from? <sighs> I think they're on the roof! Oh! <laughs> Gesturing with your hands is often the most clear way to communicate and demonstrate intentions. Can you hear me? Jump if you can hear me. Okay, you can hear me. I can't hear you. Uh, jumping dragon punch. Wi-Fi. <laughs> I can't do charades, I can't. These hands are not expressive enough. Which is actually a point in my video. So let's lean into that uniquely VR feature and make them look less stiff. And last but not least, please change how picking up items works. Right now your hand snaps to a preset position when grabbing anything and often puts your hand in the most unnatural position possible. I cannot stress this enough, it's so jarring to try to pick up a box of ammo only for your hand to snap to the underside of the container, contorting your arm into this unnatural position and getting both your hand and the box of ammo stuck in the process. Another significant example of this is the drawers in your safe house. No matter where you grab them, your hand snaps to the other end of it and that often stretches your arm so far away from you that you're not sure which way to move it anymore. I would love to see an interaction system which allows your hands to grab items from any angle. And you know what else is missing? Trigger discipline. These controllers have a feature which can detect whether your finger is touching the trigger or not, so why aren't we using it? Especially in a game where friendly fire is a real danger since you usually die in one to two shots. Oh, oh. This gun is empty! <laughs> he shot me in the back. <laughs> Teaching people about trigger discipline and gun safety should be a priority for any VR game with realistic guns. I wish you could see, here's the thing though. What were you saying? I wish that you could just... No, no, go on. No, I just wish that you could see me I... do my... No, I just that... I'm, that, I'm like, listening, it's just me. that these doors are, these doors are really loud. See. But while on the topic of controllers, I want to mention these two accessories that I tried that I think can really enhance this game. This is a controller extension that acts like the shoulder stock of a rifle, and can make your aim way more steady and consistent in most VR shooters. It stabilizes your rear hand against your chest and gives you a much more accurate feel for where your front hand should be. I've noticed I'm way more comfortable and confident using one of these, and it really adds to the overall immersion as well. These work in pretty much every VR FPS game I've tried, but it's nice in Ghost of Tabor that they have a built-in calibration setting. This lets you dial in the proper position of the game weapon to feel perfectly aligned with your accessory. The first one I tried was the eye stock, which is a single lightweight 3D printed stock that also comes with an extra piece that allows you to connect the wrist straps. I think it's supposed to provide another way to stabilize your aim, but the straps were just too long to be steady or too short to be practical. And the second stock I tried was the Senlaki Elite Pull Stock, which has two adjustable pieces and is also 3D printed but feels surprisingly sturdy despite its moving parts. You can adjust the length of the stock, which I think is an essential feature if you're going to get any stock, and additionally it has an adjustable chin rest, which is surprisingly super helpful for consistency when aiming down sights. Especially if you're into VR sniping, this thing is awesome. Aside from that, I just really 
really prefer the bigger size of the stock as it feels way more realistic and comfortable than the tiny surface area of the eye stock. Although it is a bit heavier, I don't mind the extra weight and size of it, but if you do think that would be an issue, I can definitely say the eye stock is much easier to forget you're holding on to because of how light it is. And that could be a good thing for games like this where you need both hands to be unhindered for looting, but coming in at the same price, $50 each, I definitely think the Sandlocky Elite Pull Stock is a better value. I'll have links to both in the pinned comment. That wasn't sponsored, but I just thought I would recommend it. But for now, that basically concludes my extensive rant about Ghosts of Tabor, and to make good on my very first statement, I really do think that Ghosts of Tabor is going to revolutionize virtual reality games, because I feel like the future of VR, at least from a gaming perspective, is headed the direction of Ready Player One, where everyone has their unique character with a persistent inventory of stuff they've collected over time, and I feel like games like Tabor and Riff XR are the very first step to making that a reality. I mean, imagine if VRChat had a little bit of Sword Art Online influence, where everyone has experience points to gain and fun items to obtain, but that can be a conversation for another time. Going back to Ghost of Tabor, and there is so much more to this game than I've mentioned here, and it's constantly getting updated, so if this video does well, I would love to revisit the game on the channel. If you do end up playing the game, here's my name so you can add me. Also, I guess this is kind of late at this point, but I'm not sponsored by Ghost of Tabor in any way. I honestly wish I was. Hey guys, if you're watching this, send me an email. The rest of you, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and you're probably wondering why I'm wrapping up the video when there's still some time left. The rest of the video is going to be some random funny clips that didn't make it into the main video. Are you talking about like being crazy? Because um, I was crazy <laughs> once. No. <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Keep climbing. Oh. Dude, my hands are glitching. I can't. I can't climb for so. Oh. Yes, okay. Can. I can do it. Dude, you're the little kid from Spider Man. <laughs> yes, you can, Jack. Here, take my mask. It'll make you strong. Catch it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. Climb. No. I caught myself. Well, I guess we need to find a key card. How for do that. we get a key card? Tell I don't know. know. Whoa. Hey, get out of my face. Get out of my face. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I know. Do it again. Okay, so you hey, I'm gonna reach. kill you. I'm like, <laughs> that would be so cool if you could actually pull it off. Can you fit it in your backpack oh, yeah. if you if you fold it? I'm gonna try. <gasps> you can. Nice. Here, you can have it. <laughs> down, down, down. Don't test me, man. What if I don't wanna? What if I don't uh, wanna? Don't test me. No, give me the gun. <laughs> give me the gun! <laughs> oh, like Phoenix. Straight ahead. Where is he? I'm out. I'm so out. Got him. I got okay, him. cool. <laughs> Because you're gonna get heals, take this. It's here, I'll put this right in my bag. Put it in my bag. Oh, do you know what's in my bag? <gasps> Dude, <laughs> and what if you could buy a bulletproof backpack? That would be sick. Dude, you can guy from John Wick when you go like this. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> that would be sick. Um, to mute yourself, so look on the inside of your watch here. Yeah. It's green. The, oops, the glowing light right there. If you hold your left hand to your mouth and then click X, the bottom button, it'll turn it red and it mutes you. This okay. is a dead body, man. Hello? Uh, yo, uh, hey, we hear you there. Ah! <laughs> Gosh, that scared me. I hear metal. I hear lots I of gunshots. <gasps> you want the best clue? <laughs> grenade heard that grenade no no you didn't no it's cool no it don't don't worry about that grenade uh, to be honest bro we don't know how to get to you so you're no, safe we, do. we know exactly oh, we do? where you are oh we do yeah. okay we're gonna get you we're coming yep yep <laughs>
<laughs> the narrative changed real quick on that one. Yeah, so I pulled the pin on this grenade. Uh, I'm still holding on to it. There we go. Let's go ahead and craft it. There we go, just spits it out like that. We'll dump all that in. And load. Now this one, load. Now, oh my gosh, where is it going? What is it doing? This is the downsides of realism. I spilled my ammo and now I have to pick it up. Is there an easier way to do this? Can I like scoop it up or something? Oh, man. I don't have anywhere to put this stuff. Here, I'll, uh, I'll help you out. You know what? Take this. It's on me. You need it more than me. I'll cover you with my pistol. Because I've got a vest, too. Can I pick up this backpack or no? Nice. That's so cool. That means I could technically give you anything. I could just bring in a gun for you, too. That's cool. Are you coming in teams or is it randomized? Dude, we killed the ghost of Tabor. We killed the... <laughs> Look at his name tag. Friendly. 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 No? Hands up, hands up. Got you. Whew. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I thought you were my friend. I'm looking for my friend, but I found you instead. Oh. It's okay, we can have a team of three. If we find my friend, Hi. his name is Sir Fleeb. Footsteps. Oh, Sir Fleeb. Please. Are you okay? Please. No. Please. Shh. It's gonna be okay. Alright, let's get these bodies out of the way. Come on. Oh, I feel so bad moving their body. It makes it like feel like a murder. <laughs> Water bottle or any drink if you need it. And then, uh, tape measure, do you want it? Yeah. Unless you want it. You don't exactly, it. premium. Ooh, ooh MP5. Ooh, ooh. It's stuck though, can you grab it? No. It's like Thor's hammer, hang on. Can I pick it up? <laughs> Move aside. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I am. Um, oh my See those gosh! Two that was for me. This I said, if I said, if he pulls that gun, I'm gonna shoot at his head. Hey, you made it to the outro of the video. Nice job. You can, uh, you can leave now. Or, or I mean, you can watch another one of my videos. Yeah, go do that because this one's over. Or you can do that. Sure, keep on watching this one. There's nothing more at the end of this video. It's it's over. Seriously, stop watching this one. I'm gonna get cut off because this outro can only be so long.